Welcome to Peru, the land of the Incas, where for the next 12 minutes, we're gonna dive deep into the heart of the Andes as we experience the rich culture and adventurous activities of this sacred land. In part one of this two-part series, together with this awesome crew of other travelers, we're visiting local communities living in the Sacred Valley, where aspects of ancient Incan culture are still very much in practice today. Some of these traditions are kept alive in rural areas because of tourism, which we'll talk more about later. I also want to give a big thanks to G Adventures and Planetera for putting together this incredible trip to Peru and showing us the important and positive impact that community tourism has on the local people of this country. We just left the city center of Cusco and drove about 10 minutes to a really amazing viewpoint called Cristo Blanco. You'll see a big Christ statue and it's a great spot to just like come and take in the view of the city of Cusco. The Cristo Blanco is one of the most visited modern monuments of Peru because of the view. It's also situated in a place considered sacred by the Incas. After taking in the city, we drove to the Cacacoyo community to meet and learn from the women who are part of the Cacacoyo Women's Weaving Co-op in partnership with Planetera, a nonprofit established by G Adventures that helps local communities use tourism as a catalyst to improve people's lives, protect their natural environments, and celebrate culture. Cacacoyo is an indigenous community located in the Andean area of Cusco and is home to 140 Quechua-speaking families. The community maintains a traditional way of life and many work in agriculture. And like in many communities around the world, women in this community were frequently excluded from educational and economic opportunities. That is until 2005, when the Kakakoyo Women's Weaving Co-op changed everything. The co-op, which is owned by 46 of the local women, brings in tourists from all over the world and teaches them the traditional weaving process that was once lost over previous generations because there wasn't a way to earn a significant income from it. I am learning how to dye the fabrics and how they create the dyes. What are you using? Water and natural materials. <laughs> we just learned about the weaving process here that happens in the community. Um, it's tradition, it's been happening for years and because of tourism they've been able to keep it alive because the women here be able, have been able to make an income off of it and we just learned about the weaving experience from the wool to cleaning the wool using this like natural type, type of root which I got a chance to try out myself to dyeing it with natural materials such, such as like seeds and insects and different plants to make the different colors and it's quite a cool process and it's been really awesome to learn about it and how they've been able to keep the tradition alive because of tourism. If travelers won't visit those places, those people will forget this. These people will lose the culture and that's not the idea. This is something that you are not going to find in books. This is something that you are not going to find on the internet, like how to make this. This is something that they just have right here in their heights, which is like coming from generations back in the time. Cuando hay visita, hay recién estamos trabajando. Sabemos ganar plata. No antes no sabíamos ni ganar ni plata. Nuestro esposo más trabajaba y nuestro nosotros también no no conocemos ni colegio ni escuela. Algunos algunos a la escuela no más hasta segundo grado, tercer grado así no más estábamos estudiando. Y, y, más y ahora hay escuelas. Hay, uh... Sí hay escuela ahora. Ahora nuestros hijos están yendo a universidad. Ahora recién están empezando en universidad, colegios así. Y, y ahora las mujeres trabajan como sus esposos. Sí, sí, sí ahora a nuestros esposos ayudamos ya trabajando acá en Arsanía y a nuestros hijos también ya apoyamos, ya, ya está en institución o en universidad. A nosotros es importante, es nosotros acá, nos esperamos como una familia, como un hermano o un hermano que estaría llegando de lejos. Así nosotros nos sentimos con la visita, que nos visitan nuestros amigos, nuestras amigas, que nos visitan de otros países. Nosotros nos esperamos muy contentos, muy felices y nos sentimos muy alegres porque es como una familia para nosotros y cada día estamos así. I'm in a 
traditional outfit. And since I'm married, I wear the hat like this. But if you are single, you wear it like this. And of course, after watching the whole weaving process, you can come in and buy something which supports the community and supports the art and keeps the tradition alive. Did you just buy that? I did. I just bought that. I'm going to Vermont, and since I live in Costa Rica, near you, I don't have any cold weather clothes, so... Nice. There you go. Got a scarf. Here are some of the locals. The only reason they're in here right now is because we're here, but throughout the rest of the day, they're free to just roam and climb mountains and eat all the grass they want. What are you eating right now? So this is guinea pig, which is a delicacy in Peru. It's the first time I've ever tried it, and it's actually delicious. It's, it's a lot leaner than I thought it was going to be. It's a little bit gamey, but I think that's a good thing. There's definitely some, there's some correlation to chicken. I mean, let's be honest, but it has the skin Isn't that you- Is everything like chicken? I know, everything <laughs> tastes like chicken. But the skin oh. is a little bit like what you might find from a pig, but we were just learning that um, it's, it's, it's kind of common to eat a whole guinea pig by yourself, keep the bones, and then you create the shape of a, a condor, which is kind of like, a, how would you say it? It's a, it's a bit of a spiritual thing for, for a, the Peruvians and it's quite special for them. So I've got like a lot to eat, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the, Are you going to try? Yeah. Yeah. I might just leave that one to Dane. <laughs> Are you? Uh, I've had it before. It's that we Did you like it? Yeah, location. it's like a chicken wing. Mm. It's an art. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Next, we're headed to Parque de la Papa, which translates to Potato Park in English, and is another partner of Planetera. Today, those on G-Adventures tours can visit the park to learn about the protected area and over 1,300 native potato varieties that grow on the land. We are at this potato farm, and it's not a place where you can come and buy potatoes. They don't farm the potatoes to sell them either. This place is more about protecting the different species, the different types of potatoes uh, of Peru so that we can have them around the world forever. I have the grandfather potato in my hand, the abuelo. And this potato is the start of all the other potatoes and in this community. They grow 1,370 different types of potatoes. And in all of Peru, they have 3,657 different types of potatoes, which is more than anywhere else in the world. Y este chuño dura hasta 30 años, porque es bastante seco y... Nosotros guardamos en una refrigeradora TAC que se llama. Uh, vemos el sol, el, la, el cielo tiene que ser bien despejado. Bien, no tiene que ser nieve, entonces eh, para que la helada coge a la, la papa. ¿no? La papa tiene que ser tendida en un piso y en la mañana de dos días montonamos y pisamos, sacamos el jugo. Time to try some uh, potato alcohol. Mm, it's actually really nice. Yes. That goes down very easily. <laughs> For our last stop of the day, we're heading to the Cuyo Chico community to learn about Tinkui, another Planetera partner. That's initiative is creating unique cultural experiences centered around traditional pottery and gastronomy. While providing rich cultural experiences, Tinkui is also providing income opportunities, particularly for women who previously had to seek employment far from their families and communities. What better place to learn how to make empanadas? We are making empanadas, one of my favorite Latin, you know, bites. You can have it as a meal, you can have it as a snack, you can have it anytime. And so today we make the nice empanada. Okay, we put a little bit of a cheese. <laughs> And we put a little bit of a green. Good accent. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> it looks like an empanada. Kind of. Yeah. Bit of a wonky one. Uh, what's the banana for? A little moon star design. Fancy, fancy. This is like a relative to quinoa. A little sprinkle on top. Bueno. The 
classic tours, guys, on the on Cusco City on the way to Machu Picchu. When travelers go to Machu Picchu, is to visit a specific places. You start in Cusco, you visit Pisa, you visit Ollantaytambo, and you visit Chincheros. So there are like three places that you cannot miss when you do this uh, Sacred Valley tour. But for many years, those communities on the way were just abandoned by travel agencies. Travel agencies, they were just focusing right there and just like not leaving any income to the communities that are on the way to Machu Picchu as well. So G Adventure guys on the JRs 2016 start working with this community uh, in order to bring travelers into this community and rescue the culture of this community. While the empanadas are cooking, we have been doing some pottery of our own. This is my little Luna. And the significance of this bowl is um, when someone here builds a house, it's a, it's a big accomplishment. And the house gets a godmother, a godfather. And that godmother, godfather goes to the market and gets one of these. And it goes on top of the house as a symbol of good luck and safety and protection. So we were gifted one of these, because you can't buy one yourself, you have to be gifted one of these. We were gifted one of these to also paint and add more character to, which I just did. And I'm going to put it on our jungle airstream home in Costa Rica. Empanada time! It's good. I definitely think I could have put way more on the inside. It's very doughy, but the flavor is so good. It's good. I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely not as good as yours, you, but like. I'm considering it in, in Kuji or Bondi somewhere. Why not? Would you come? I, well, I don't know. My, I don't know what yours tastes like. Have a taste. <laughs> oh, here's a banana. I was not <laughs> expecting banana. How are your bananas, everyone? Very good. good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yeah. After an incredible time getting to know the local people, experience their day-to-day -day living, and learning about the traditions of each village that have been around for years, we're heading deeper into the Andes Mountains to start a two-day hike before our final stop to Aguas Calientes in Machu Picchu. Yes, someone ends up needing oxygen, we do go off trail and need to cross a flowing river, and we also learn that we've been pronouncing Machu Picchu wrong this whole time. See you in part two of this adventure in Peru.